What are we talking about this morning? Praying. Prayer. It is true that God knows everything. It is true that God knows what you and I need in our daily lives. But God wants us to ask, why is that? Is that for his benefit? Or is that for our benefit? The impetus or, or the driving force of the five functions which we'll be covering in the church is prayer. Worship became becomes just nothing but beat the drum without prayer. Evangelism is empty bumping our chest thinking we're better than somebody else without prayer. Ministry becomes nothing more than just good works without prayer. Discipleship becomes indoctrination without prayer. And fellowship is nothing but a good time without prayer. That's how important prayer is. How many hours did, did Jesus spend in prayer during his earthly ministry? If you read through the Gospels, time and time and time again, you find Jesus at all hours of the day going by himself to pray. We talked a little bit about that uh, this morning in, in Sunday school. And the, uh, the illustration was given was, there was a, uh, <clears throat> I'm assuming probably of, of the Muslim faith, a lady in Hayes Walmart doing her prayer. Are we dedicated enough now, I'm not talking about making a show of things I'm not talking about going out and, and drawing attention to ourselves but are we dedicated enough to go into our prayer closet and spend an hour a day or more in prayer why is that important We become discouraged and run out of fuel. It becomes mundane, burdensome, and it's just an exercise in futility. There is no power. So today we're going to bring some things that you already know, but I want to remind you about prayer. The first one okay, is we're to pray in the Spirit. Now we just come through Romans. This is from Romans 8. And we're not talking about some mystical thing here. Okay? If, if you want a reference to write down on, on there, there's Romans 8 is one. Okay, Psalm 62 6 is another. Psalm 62 6. Now, this speaks um, to the true connection with God, vice the mechanical things. Throughout the New Testament, Jesus condemns, that's a strong word, but Jesus condemns, okay, the showy, 
long, drawn-out, mechanical prayers of the Pharisees. What does he encourage us to do? He encouraged us to go into our own prayer closet, if you will, and don't repeat a bunch of nonsense. Jesus set the example. How did he set the example? Test question. What is the Lord's Prayer? If you're thinking, Our Father who art in heaven, you're wrong. That's not the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is in John 17. And it's much longer than that one. What does the Lord's Prayer, okay, or the one we call the Lord's Prayer, what is that all about? That's teaching us the elements. These are the things that are supposed to be contained in here. Next week, we're going to talk about them. Next week, okay, you'll learn how to pray for an entire hour. And it just, and once you go through that, you're going to go, wow, why didn't I think of this before? What he said. We not only pray in the spirit, okay, we pray with the mind, okay? We pray with the mind. That's number two. <clears throat> we find this in Philippians 2 and in verse 5. Your attitude should be the same, or your mind should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Wow, what, what does that mean? What does it mean to have the mind of Christ? Prayer is anything but mindless repetition. Okay. Indeed, we're to strive... To have the mind of Christ. What does that entail? What is the mind of Christ? Well, years ago, I had the opportunity to um, sit under a seminar, if you will, under a guy named uh, T.W. Hunt. At the time, he was the uh, the prayer guru or whatever of the SBC. That doesn't mean a whole bunch, but <clears throat> but over here in Philippians chapter two, verse five, in your relationships with one another, have the mindset or the mind of Christ. Are you ready for this? Who being the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of a servant. And being made human in likeness. If we are to follow the example of Jesus in our prayer life, we need to strip all our titles, all our accomplishments, everything, and present them and set them aside and come to God in humility. How many of us do that? 
or how many of us go about our prayer life, okay? Now that I've got this element and we do a checklist, I've, I've done this, I'm supposed to pray this way, I'm doing this way, I'm doing this way, I'm doing this way, okay? Lord, you have to answer my prayer. Really? How's that working for you? You don't have to do a thing. But he tells us to pray with the mind of Christ. It's just not senseless babbling. It's not repetition. The third one we come to is we're to pray in Jesus' name. What does that mean? Here's, here's two scriptures, 1 John 2, 1, and then John 14 and verse 13. By what and whose authority are we approaching the throne of grace? This is not, re repeat, this is not Okay, a, a magic formula. Just because I say in Jesus' name, God is not obligated, okay, it's not a um, carte blanche type of thing where I, where I get my uh, wants and my desires. Well, I prayed in Jesus' name, and your point is what? What is it that we're supposed to be doing? Number four. While abiding. First, Thess First Thessalonians 5.17 says, But always try to be kind to each other and to everyone else. How do I expect God to answer my prayer? Okay. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? How am I expecting God to answer my prayer when I treat you and people with disdain? It doesn't fly, does it? It doesn't fly. How can I even abide with my Savior when I'm at odds with someone else? Jesus says to lay it aside. Jesus says to come to the altar and ask forgiveness. Jesus says to apologize to my wife before I enter the prayer closet. Jesus says take care of business with that person that you just had that argument with. Because I can't speak for anybody else, but chances are, okay, when I miffed at her, okay, it's something that, you know, it's like looking in a mirror. There might be something that Dan has done. And there might be something that Dan's at fault. And it might be, you're getting the picture. You're getting the picture. It, it, it's not rocket science. We try to make prayer complicated, and it's not.
Number five, in faith. Psalm 20 and verse 7. Some trust in chariots. You know that. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in, in all. So. Nikki, I see you're looking that up. Would you read that when, when you get there? Please. Psalm 20 and verse 7. Who am I trusting? What am I trusting? Am I trusting in my own abilities? Am I trusting in my own experience? Now look, there's a time and place for that. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. What was the last part of that again? Can it be any plainer? I'm not to trust my own abilities. I'm not to trust my own resources, my own experiences. There's a little thing there in, in, in uh, I think it's 1 Kings 5. So I, I'll have to look it up. Just for argument's sake, it's 1 Kings 5. Okay? Where David asked God to say, hey, how am I supposed to attack the Philistines? And God gives him specific directions on how to do this. And God Delivers the Philistines into his hand. Okay, gets great victory. Okay. Months later, face the Philistines again. And basically what David says, God, I got this. I, I, I'll do the same thing I did before. And what's God say? No, you won't. No, you won't. This time I want you come from behind instead of well why did God do that so God gets the honor and glory and David doesn't get a case of the big head number six Isaiah 57, 15. How many of us come to the Father in prayer? In humility. How many of us do that? We are to come with a humble heart. Thank you. We are to come with a humble heart. Not demanding anything. We owe God everything. God owes, owes us nothing. Did you hear me? We owe God everything. Number seven.
in sincerity. Matthew chapter 6 in these verses Jesus is giving us an example of how to pray and not necessarily what to pray. All right? Do we really understand, do we really comprehend that we're talking to the master of the universe? Do we really It's not showtime. Now, I've been guilty of this, okay? And I don't like it, so I try not to do it. Does that make sense? What I don't like, okay, is the preachers, at their closing prayer, re-preach the whole sermon again. It's like, duh, come on. What's that for? And in my mind, it's just showing off. God said, look, you're not here to show off. You're here in prayer. If you've been around Baptist churches long enough, Do I really want to say this, Cole? <laughs> You've been around Baptist churches long enough, okay? Two things you, you'll know, okay? You know who you can call on to pray, okay? Some people just don't want to pray out loud in public. Okay, that's fine. And when you call on someone, okay, you can basically quote their prayer, okay? Why do I call on? Why don't I just, okay, I'm going to credit Cole with this one, and I just do it. We, we've developed some bad habits, okay? And I'm not chastising anybody, okay? Cole, thank you for letting me use you as an example there. Our prayer should be from the heart. It should be from the heart. I remember I was serving in, in Rathen, Idaho, and I called on a gentleman to close us out in prayer. And I hadn't called on him before. And I asked him to say, you know, would, would you close this out? And he said to me, I mean, just right, right out in the open, he said, preacher, I don't, I don't know what to say. I said, just, just pray what's on your heart. When he was through, there wasn't a dry eye in the place. I haven't heard a prayer like that in a long, long time. Because he spoke his heart. It wasn't a rehearsed thing. And he said, well, I apologize for stumbling and all that. And I said, dude, if I could pray like that, there's nothing preventing me from doing that. Number eight. Way to pray with perseverance. Turn to the book of Genesis, if you would. Book of Genesis. 
chapter 32. Verse 26. Remember the story? This is a story where, where Jacob is wrestling with the angel. Some try to make the case of he, he's actually wrestling with the Lord himself. That's for another time, another day. Okay. But verse 26 says, Then the man said, Let me go, for it's almost daybreak. And Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. When's the last time You said that to the Lord. I'm here, Lord. I need your blessing. And a humble and a contrite heart. Lord, I'm here. I need your blessing. I'm not letting you go. Persistence. Persistence. Jesus also in the New Testament gives us an example of the the, uh, the widow that went to the magistrate time and time and time and time again. When he opened the court, she's here again. Okay. And finally, what's happened? Give this lady what she wants. So she quits badgering. Now look, we're not to badger God. Okay. But the principle is the same. God's heard my prayer. He knows my heart. He wants to hear you again. We have a silent faith. Faith from within that God is going to hear us. And that God will answer our prayer. And then we have this hard faith type thing, okay, where it's demonstrated by our action. And then we have this give more thing. What do you think that means? Not God give me more. God, I need to give you more. I, for one, need to hear the preacher today. And to put into practice what this preacher's been saying. I'll be honest with you. Nope, it's not going to be easy. But I can tell you this okay, on the other side, it's going to
that'd be worthwhile. Would you agree? Join me. Join me this week. Spend some time in prayer. Spend some time developing your relationship with the Lord. So you could come to him and go, Daddy, I'm here again. Daddy, I need your help. What do you think God will do? Get away from me. Uh Uh-oh. My Bible tells me he's there. He's there waiting on me. He's waiting on you. What do you think? Father, in some ways, this message has been for me. I thank you for thank you for it. It's tough, and I see a lot of my shortcomings. Father, help me. Help me. Not only to set the example for the people here, but in my own life, to spend time with you and develop a relationship where it should be. Thank you.